pray for the eternal repose of the soul of our dear brother Tom Darowitz. In order that we might be Lord to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confirm from the book of Revelation. I saw a large white throne and the one who was sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. I saw the dead, the great, and the lowly standing before the throne, and the scrolls were opened. Then another scroll was opened, the book of life. The dead were judged according to their deeds by what was written in the scrolls. The sea gave up its dead, then death and Hades gave up their dead. All the dead were judged according to their deeds, then death and Hades were thrown into the pool of fire. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the pool of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gave me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Um, you spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. There will be no more death. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. It is proper and natural that we grieve and feel a loss of the death of someone whom we love. However, our faith enables us to bear up the burden of pain and loss, and through faith, and because of faith, there is a consoling note that shines through, because we know that the one we love is with God. As the Book of Wisdom proclaims, the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They are in peace. Certainly a consoling thought. We are also assured that Tom is alive with God because our life is not ended but merely changed. It is changed into something more perfect, a life with an in God that will remain constant, and that is the door to the full life in God along with so many others along with the holy people of the centuries, the saints, others from our families, and from among our friends, with whom we have shared so many happy moments in this life, and these friendships will be renewed and the happy moments remembered. There are so many things that we should uh, thank God for, Tom, for all of us. And I remember uh, there was a, a man who went on vacation to the Holy Land with his wife and a mother and mother-in-law and halfway through their trip the mother-in-law died so the son-in-law went to the funeral home our undertaker and it explains that he can ship the body home but it will cost him five thousand dollars or he can bury the her in the holy land for hundred fifty dollars and um, i'll ship her home says the son-in-law are you sure as the undertaker that's too, that's expensive uh, and because besides we do a very nice job here 
Look, the son-in-law says, I've heard, heard that 2,000 years ago, there's a guy who buried here in the Holy Land. He was buried here, and three days after, he rose up again. I just cannot take that chance, you know. So we must not uh, be, but there is resurrection from the dead as of the book of wisdom. As the, our, the gospel says that there is resurrection from the dead. And I also remember there was a story about an empty seat in the Super Bowl. When the beer vendor was called over by the guy in the seat next to the empty one, the vendor asked, say, how come that seat is empty, it's Super Bowl? The guy replied, that, that is my wife's seat. The vendor said, where is she? She's dead, said the man. Oh, I'm sorry, the vendor said. He gave the guy his beer and his change. Then he said, couldn't you find a friend of a relative to use the ticket? No, the guy said, they're all at her funeral. <laughs> so, so much me. we must be mourning and we must... Uh, I remember... Uh, I priest started catechism class in the fifth grade and he told the boys and the girls, instead of my asking you questions, how about you asking you questions? They liked the idea and since he had spoken in the general judgment in the previous class, one girl asked, what will our bodies be like when we rise from the grave? For instance, suppose a man lost an arm, will get that arm back? And the priest explained that the body will rise in a completely perfect condition, free from all defects, free from all deformities. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches, that man will rise again in the greatest possible natural perfection. And the general teaching of the Church, our Lord Jesus Christ has founded, is that our rigid bodies will be of mature or grown up age, that they will be perfect bodies. Forty days ago, the soul of Tom Darowitz left his body. Today, his hands that were busy doing good, now they are gone. His feet that carried him so often to the Church, that carried him to the task of helpfulness to our loved ones, and now they are gone. His eyes that brightened with friendship that shone up to God with such faith and trust. Now they are gone. His tongue that spoke the consoling, the encouraging word is now gone. The heart that beat with the love of God and neighbor is no more. All is gone. But someday, someday the lifeless body of Tom, which is now gone, will appear again, will be whole again, will be joined with this wonderful soul never to die again, never to separate again. He will live forever. Then his feet will carry him firmly to the feet of the Lord whom he served so faithfully. His hands will be raised in praise of God. His tongue will sing God's praises. His eyes will sparkle with the joy of in God's presence. His noble heart will throb again with, with the happiness of being forever with God for whom that heart beat on this earth. In his faith, in his absolute certainty, that the body of Tom will rise again, then we can smile through our tears and grief. And that is our hope and consolation today. That, uh, but me meanwhile, we should prepare for our death, which is sure to come. We never know when it is coming. Tom died at the age of uh, how many? 80? 80, he was 80. So. We must be ready for, for this eventuality which is sure to come. We might live 80, 90, 100, 110, but still we're going to pass away from this earth. And we shall, uh, I remember uh, John and Peter, they were the best of friends. They loved baseball. They agreed to over the icebergs. We'll try to communicate from heaven and tell whether there is baseball in heaven. Eventually, Peter died, and three days after, John heard a voice from somewhere, is that you, Peter? Yes, Peter said, I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is, yes, there is baseball in heaven. And the bad news is, you are pitching tomorrow night. So what if you are pitching tomorrow night? Are you ready? So we must couple our faith with good works and forgive our brothers and sisters. Let us forgive one another. I remember there was an old man and woman. They were married for many years. And they, they do despise each other, and each time they had a fight, screams and yelling could be heard uh, deep into the night. A frequent statement from the old man was, When I die, I will dig my way up the grave and out of my tomb to come back and haunt you for the rest of your life. The neighbors believed that the old man practiced witchcraft and was responsible for missing animals and strange sounds at night. The old man 
was buried, uh, died suddenly of unknown causes. And after the burial, the wife uh, went straight to the bar with close friends and began to party. That puzzled the neighbors, so they approached her and said, are you not worried or afraid that your husband who said that when he dies, he will dig his way up and out of his tomb and hunt you for the rest of your life? The wife put down her drink and, and looked at them coldly and said, let him dig and dig. I had him buried upside down. <laughs> so, so we must uh, forgive one another and uh, ask for forgiveness. Forgive your brother, your sister, your in-law, for example, you know, your mother-in-law, for example. You know, I, I remember there was a, a man who was diagnosed by the doctor that he had only two weeks to live. The doctor said, you have only two weeks to live. And he was asked by the doctor as to where he would like to spend the last two weeks of his life. And he said, I would like to spend the last two weeks of my life in the house of my mother-in-law. And that surprised the doctor. He said, you would like to spend the last two weeks of your life in the house of your mother-in-law? Yes, why? The guy said, because that would be the longest two weeks of my life. <laughs> so let us uh, forgive one another and say, act of, go to confession if need be. Okay? Say an act of contrition and uh, a couple of faith with good works because faith without good works is empty. You know, it's not he who says, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of God, but he who does the will of my Father. That is the word of our Lord. The St. James says, Faith without good works is empty. Revelation 14, 13 says, Happy are those who have died in the Lord, for their good works will accompany them into heaven. Matthew 25, 46 says, Whatsoever you do to the least of your brethren, that you do unto me. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us prepare for this eventuality which is sure to come. And time is short. Time is fleeting. Life is brief. Life is temporary. Life is loaned to us by God. We never know when He would take it back. And it's a necessity of always being prepared. The necessity of using foresight in building a spiritual life to make us worthy of eternal life. Let us repent for the sins that we have done. And let us reform our lives. Let us forgive one another. Reconcile with one another. Live a life of charity, justice, piety, and faithfulness to the Lord. Let us close this with a word from uh, the message of the, the dead to the living. And the dead is saying, Take ye, dear friend, in passing by, where you are now, so once was I. Where I am now, you soon will be. Prepare for death and follow me. Amen. Amen. Prayers. He became God's son through baptism and was often fed at the table of our Lord. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven and with all the saints, may he inherit the promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother Tom and together I will meet Christ Jesus when he is our life shall appear in his glory. Eternal rest grant unto Tom that which our Lord. May he rest in peace. Amen. May soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And that mighty God bless all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Master's end of go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Now let us bless the good Tom. We thank you for our friends and relatives who have come to join in the celebration in order to pray for the non repose of his soul. We thank you for the food which we are about to partake. As we partake of the food, may we increase in faith and not in weight. Bless us, O Lord, and this day gift which we are about to receive from their bounty. We Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Stuff going on from camping to work. So, thank you guys for coming out. Obviously, we have some food for everybody to come enjoy. I hope a lot of you guys came here to share some stories with each other, laugh, smile, 
hopefully give my mom a hug. <laughs> She's tired of my hugs already. Uh, but no, just honestly, we really appreciate you guys coming out. Father, thank you again. Two great masses with you already, so we really appreciate you a lot. Thank you very much, Father. And to all of our family and friends that come out, Agnes and Sharon, thank you guys always for coming out, representing my brother and my family. But thank you guys, Thank you, thank you all, thank you so much. Well, we love you guys. Please come up, enjoy some food, hang out for a little bit. No rush to get out of here. We have the place for a couple more hours. So thank you guys so much. do at this moment when you're standing before me with tears in your eyes trying to tell me that you have found you another and you just don't love me no more no, no more And what did you think I would say at this moment When I'm faced with the knowledge That you just don't love me Did you think I would curse you Or say things to hurt you Cause you just don't love me no more Did you think I could hate you Or raise my hands to you Oh, come on, you know me too well And how could I hurt you well, Darling, I love you and you know I will never hurt you No, no, no What did you think I would give at this moment If you just stick I'd subtract 20 years From my life I'd fall down on my knees I'd kiss the ground that you walk on If I could just uh, hold you again I'd fall down on my knees the ground that you walk on, baby If I could just hold you If I could just hold you I would fall down, down on my knees Oh God, please let me hold you Hold you